Okay, my friends, it's looking into nuclear radiation. What can we do about this? Well, they have an ice wall underneath Fukushima to hold in the radiation and the water and all this stuff so it won't leak into the ocean. Well, how are we going to stop this stuff from radiating? It just keeps radiating forever. Well, I think I understand how we might be able to stop it. Now, I've been looking through uh, nuclear waste remediation, and um, I, uh, I don't see anything that references um, high frequency radiation to um, to bring this stuff back into alignment and I think that might work I honestly do I'll show you why I think that okay my friends everything's wrong in physics I'm just gonna tell you that right now and I'm gonna show you why right now they say the new boson appears in nuclear decay break standard model no question whatsoever what else is being said here is the Royal institution of London says that lepton universality doesn't work. I've been reporting this for years. Now they finally are agreeing. Here goes. The reason why this is so interesting and thrilling is that besides being unexpected, this could genuinely be the first sight of something new. Because if, when we've analysed more data, this difference between muons and electrons stays and lepton universality seems to be violated, well, what that means is that there's something wrong with the standard model. That's it. We found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. All right. That's, she's right. <laughs> because they're basing it on gigantic protons and gigantic neutrons, and that is not the case. You cannot make the particles they are making with all of that, with, with those such a few number of particles. They have a proton is just a gigantic ball, 1,837 times bigger than an electron. A neutron is 1,838 times bigger than an electron. A photon is two electrons together. I'm going to show you this in a second. You just heard the Bohr model is wrong. After that, everything was wrong. Einstein based all his stuff on that kind of nonsense, and he was just totally off the mark. Bohr, I mean, um, Hubble based his theory that everything has to be going out based on Einstein, said the theory of light can't slow down. So really, now all of a sudden everything's going faster than the speed of light, which is not, pro is not allowed. So it's, it's just a total nonsense. Now, um, let's go a little further here. All right, there's a little tiny cheap compass. This is a, just a little piece of a batter of a magnet. Look at this. Look at how far away I am and how, how much it affects it. <laughs> yeah. Now, the magnetism, the, the Earth is a very, very, very weak magnetic attractive source. Tesla has what they call a Tesla magnetic field. And that field, I think it's like, I don't know, 100,000 times stronger than the Earth's field, something like that. I, Maybe it's even a million. I can't remember. The, but it's, it's just way, 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 way bigger than the Earth's field. And they are working with these gigantic Tesla um, fields in places. And I don't know if that's a great thing to do. I mean, that's just not natural. But, you know, what are you going to do about that stuff? All right, so here we go. Don't forget, I say that the core is like this, and then around it, are electrons that float around it, and they will lock in at exact distances. Now, what we will see is what's called the rule of eight, and that means that there's, in the, in the lowest energy level, there's only two electrons allowed. Then you get into the rule of eight. Let's start with the lowest one. Here it comes, and it's going to be frequencies. So the pitch of the tone increases, the patterns get more and more complex because they add more and more electrons. I'm saying it's identical to the, to the I mean, I sure looks it to me. There's the S orbital. All right, here's your nucleus. All right, here's your electrons. You can only have two. Watch this. I found out that these things stick. <laughs> you can have one up here. Whoops. You can have one up there or one up there. Or you can have one over here and one over here. But you can't have four. You can only have two. All right, now. Or you can only have one for hydrogen, two for helium. 
Now, let's keep going with the shaking here. Now, as it goes up, see they lock in. Now it's going to fall apart into a million pieces. And guess what the million pieces are? See it there, right there? What you're looking at right there, that's nuclear radiation. There is a bazillion, trillion, zillion pieces that are just, and they're just, they just want to get the hell away from each other. Well, how could you make them turn into patterns where they're stable like that eight? You see, this is the rule of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is your core. Now, I say put some frequency into this stuff and see if you can shake them into their patterns of, of like this. This is what happens. You see it shaking? Now, at the 1033 hertz, it locks in. Now you've got no more radiation. See, now it's all radiating like crazy. Boom, 1820, ting, I'm okay there. I'm okay, I'm good. That's called resonance. Well, now we're back into and now we're gonna lock that down at 2041. But you would just, you would flush, flush all of your nuclear radiated materials with extreme frequencies of every different frequency range. Hutchison, I um, can't remember his name is, uh, Hutchison. Oh, I can't remember his first name, but um, he, he did this frequency stuff and you could make you can make anything change frequencies inside of here if you can make the frequency small enough the atoms inside of here will literally jiggle inside their own structure in their own atomic structure and I'll show you how I can prove that but this is what happens as they get more and more they're, they're falling all everywhere you have to shake them into into stability Really, that's what it is. Shake. <laughs> Get, stop doing that. Get, stop it. <laughs> okay, so Latham is crazy machines. Tractor beam magnet. Brass ring, which is not magnetic. Six neobidnium magnets in there with a certain polarity. He's going to reverse up another polarity and put it in the center. He's going to creating a magnetic, um, uh, the, the nucleus. And what he's doing, he's got one opposing the other, and he's, <clears throat> he pushes that in between. Now, he's got a, a, two different polarities, one facing each other. Now, anybody that approaches are not going to be allowed in there. There's a, plenty of polarity in there to hold itself together. That's quantum. Now, at some point, more electrons will come in. That's just nothing more than an electron in its orbit. All right, just stay away. You can stay right there, and that's exactly where you're going to stay. You're not going to go this way. You're not going to come this way. That is it. Somebody comes in and bang, bangs all of us, yes. Now you can move around a little bit. That's called heat. If you, somebody bangs you so hard that you fly away, that's called light. But this is what he's got in the core. One of these is what that is right there, and that's the core. All right, that's exactly what you're looking at. All right, now. Let's see what happens as he shakes this. You will see heat when it starts jiggling. Right now, it's just sort of basic. Yeah, it's just laying around doing not a whole lot of anything. Nobody's bashing into anybody else. But as he starts bumping it around, it will start jumping around. Now, that's what you call heat. Somebody's trying to push that out of that spot. That's the only reason it's going to do that. And of course, flying off like it just did is called light. And what is that? Light is nothing more than some really nasty guy coming in and pushing so hard, it knocks the guy out of his place. All right, you, you saw it shaking, jiggling like crazy, and then flying off. Now, I'm going to tell you what. When they are in these configurations that are unstable, they want to get out of it. They want to jiggle away. But they're also against other particles that are highly unstable. So somehow you have to mix these and to mix the cores is a little tricky you can mix these particles I think quite easily but to mix the cores is going to take this kind of effect because right now that core is like say this size and it might be semi-stable I don't know it appears to be pretty stable because they last a very long time this nuclear radiation so it's got a couple of little particles hanging around it that shouldn't be there and they're psh, they're going to go flying off here and there. That's nuclear radiation. They call it half-lives and so forth. Now, what we need to do is to get these particles that have these little things hanging off like this. Just think of it this way. 
and, and they're, they're not right, and they're always doing this, and all of a sudden, phew, 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 they go flying. Well, we need to do this, and it's done, and it says, hey, that's pretty good, that feels nice, <laughs> and then it's all over. If you could do that, and it did feel nice, that might be able to, and, and you've just broadcast it, some just absolutely horrendous vibration. And these are angstrom units. Angstrom units are, you see an A with a little circle on the top of it, it means angstrom units. You, you, nobody uses them. It's in the atomic nucleus quantum distances. So what you would have to do, they're going to be all over the place. One's going to be here, one's going to be out here, some are going to be over here, some are going to be over here, some are going to be, because there is no, no, you know, uh, consistency. Because they're all different particles. They're just everywhere. They're all over the place because they just smashed the bits. They're not supposed to be in bits between here. And in between every one of these particles is thousands, and I mean sometimes tens of thousands of particles between every single one of these which you call an atom. It's not like this one just jumps right to the next one to the next one. No. There's thousands, sometimes, like I say, 10,000 or more particles in between. And every one of them can become a, a radioactive particle. And then it has to find its way home to one of these, go up or go down. So if we can shake the hell out, and they just all of a sudden, hey, they all went back to where it's supposed to be. That would be pretty nice.